We're on problem 110. Scroll this up. 110. Whenever Martin has a restaurant bill with an amount between $10 and $99, he calculates the dollar amount of the tip as two times the tens digit of the amount of his bill. Fair enough. So essentially, if there is a tens digit, he just multiplies it by two. If the amount of Martin's most recent restaurant bill was between 10 and 99, fair enough, was the tip calculated by Martin on his bill greater than 15% of the amount of the bill? So it was tip greater than 15%. That is the question. Statement 1 says the amount of the bill was between 15 and $50. 15 and $50. So one it will essentially is enough for this problem is sufficient if every for every bill uh, based on his calculation where you double the tens digit it's going to be greater than 15 and i suspect let's see if we take the lower end of this on this he'll pay $2 right he'll pay a $2 tip on 15 and what percentage is that 15 goes into 2.00 1 15 50 15 goes into 50 three times, 3 times 50, 45, and it just keeps going. So that's a 13% tip. So if we're closer to, well, I guess it's never going to, well, it's going to be even lower than that at $16, right? Maybe the bill wasn't 15, the bill was $16. So the tip is, I don't know, at the lower end, it's 13, 12%. And at the higher end, if, it's on, if the bill is, I don't know, let's say the bill is $40, exactly. If the bill is $40 exactly and he pays, he would pay eight dollars on that, right? If the bill is forty, then Bill would pay eight dollars, which would be twenty percent. So I can pick different numbers in this range, and based on the way Bill calculates his tip, oh no, not Bill. Well, I don't know how I got that name. Oh, they said the amount of the bill, right? Depends how Martin calculates his bill. He uh, he can either pay less than fifteen percent or more than fifteen percent. So statement one alone is not sufficient. What does statement two tell us? The tip calculated by Martin was eight dollars. So the tip is equal to eight dollars. Well, this is going to be two times the tens digit, so that means that the bill was equal to forty, I don't know, forty something. Right? So let's think about it. If the bill so the worst case is if if the bill if he paid eight dollars on a forty dollar bill, that's definitely more than fifteen percent, right? That's eight of forty, that's twenty percent. That's what I just actually calculated. But if he paid it, let's see, the worst case is on a $49 bill, that the bill keeps going up and he just pays $8. So 8 is 8 bigger than 15% of 49. Well, yeah, because 8 over 50, 8 over 50 is equal to what? It's e that's equal to 16%, right? So if 8 over 50 is 16%, 8 over 49, if we lower the denominator a little bit, that's going to be greater than 16%. So no matter what range in the 40s the bill was, whether it's $40 or $49 or anything in between, an $8 tip is going to be more than, it's actually going to be more than 16%, not, not to speak of even 15%. So statement number two alone is sufficient to answer this question. And statement number one is fairly useless. Problem 111. The price per share of stock X increased by 10% over the same time period that the price per share of stock Y decreased by 10%. The reduced price per share of stock Y was what percent of the original price per share of stock X? Fascinating. So let's do initial and final. So the price, so X final is equal to, it increased by 10% from the initial period. Okay, so it equals 1.1 1 .1 times x initial. Fair enough. And then over the same time period, y decreased by 10%. So y final is equal to 10% less than y initial. So that's 0 0.9 times y initial. And what they want to know is the reduced price per share of stock y. So that's yf. was what percent of the original price per share of stock X, of X initial? So this is what they want to figure out. This is a percentage. So let's see if the statements help us out at all. The increased price per share of stock X 
was equal to the original price per share of stock Y. So the increased price per share of stock X, so that's XF, that's the final, that's the increased share price, right? It increased from the initial to the final. So that increased price per share of stock X was equal to the original price per share of stock Y. So that equals Y initial. Y initial. So this is interesting. I don't know if it gets us anywhere. This deals with X final and X initial. So I think we can, so we could write, right, if we could write all of it in terms of Y initial. So Y final equals, so let's rewrite this. This is equal to, Y final is 0.9 times Y initial, right? That's just from this equation. 0.9 times Y initial. And let's see if we could write the initial X in terms of, in terms of initial Y. So X final is equal to Y initial. So that means that Y initial is equal to this. So that equals 1.1 X initial. And that means that we can divide both sides of this equality by 1.1. And we get X initial is equal to 1 over 1.1 times Y initial. Right? So then we have this, 1 over 1.1 times y initial. And then these two would cancel out, and you would actually have your answer. So statement 1 alone is sufficient to answer the question. And it wasn't obvious to me at first, but then you have to realize that the, the terminology is confusing, but that you can actually write both of these in terms of y initial, given that information, given the fact that x final is equal to y initial. Let's see what statement 2 does for us. The increase in the price per share of stock X was 10 elevenths the decrease in the price per share of stock Y. Let me think about that. The increase in the price per share of stock X. So that means that X final minus X initial, right? That's the increase that this was equal to 10 over 11 times the decrease in the price per share of stock Y. So what was the decrease? This was Y initial minus Y final. Minus Y final. Because this was a larger number, and we wanted a positive number here, because we're just saying the decrease. We're not saying you know, the negative increase. So let's see if we can simplify this at all. If we can simplify this at all, so let's see, you get, well, you get x final minus x initial is equal to 10 elevenths y initial minus 10 elevenths y final. And remember, the whole time we just want to figure out what y final over x initial are y final over x initial. So let's think about this. So x final minus an x, let's write x, x final is equal to 1.1 times x initial, right? So we have 1.1 times x initial minus x initial is equal to, actually I should have done that in the first step. Let's just skip this right now. Let's just write the 10 over 11s. 10 over 11s. We want, what do we want in the final? We want y final. So we just want to substitute for y initial. So y initial, sorry, I'm confusing myself. So y initial is going to be equal to y final divided by 0.9. So 1 over 0.9 y final. I know this is a little confusing. Minus y final. I just did a substitution for y initial. And then here, well, this is actually, we know that this is, we can solve this problem, although it gets quite hairy. Because here, if you think about it, you're going to get some number, you're going to get, well, you're going to get 0.1 x initial is equal to, you know, 1 divided by point, you're going to get some constant after you do all this math times y final, y final. And so you can easily figure out what y final divided by x initial is. 
just by dividing both sides by x initial and then dividing both sides by a, and you would have solved the problem. And I'm not going to do that because it's actually kind of hairy and I don't have you know, 1 divided by 0.9 and then multiplying it by 10 of 11 is, is a fairly convoluted way of doing it. But hopefully, you see that this is solvable. And let me just review that again because I think I, I did it in my own head in a little circuitous way. So the statement itself said the change, the gain in x, x final minus next initial, was 10 elevenths times the loss in y. So y initial minus y final, because y final is a smaller one. X final, we can rewrite in terms of x initial, just using our initial, the fact that it was 10% more. So I just did that here. right? And y initial, we can rewrite as y final. y initial, you could say y initial is equal to y final divided by 0.9. And that's what we did there. And then you can see here, this will simplify to some constant times y final. Then you multiply that times 10 11. So you get some constant times y final. And then you have 0.1 times x initial, right? 1.1 minus 1. And then you can just do some simple algebra to figure out what y final over x initial is. So both statements independently are sufficient to solve this problem. I think that was the hardest one we've done so far.